Hello and welcome back to A Boeing Revolution, your number one news source for everything in regards to the Boeing company and Elon Musk. I thought I'd bring us an episode today uh, in regards to the recent podcast, the recent Recode Decode podcast by Kara Swisher. Quite an interesting podcast, covered a lot of things about Tesla, SpaceX, uh, Elon Musk's relationship with the media, which is obviously not very good because they continue to talk uh, a lot of rubbish and uh, basically fabricate news stories so they can get clicks that's my opinion on it guys but each to their own however he did spend uh, i believe around 10 minutes talking about the boring company a lot of it is kind of stuff we already know however it does kind of reinforce the point of how important it is that we cut down traffic in major uh, cities and other towns and other areas of the country so i thought we could listen to that today and uh, we could look at some news while that is playing what dropped 30 percent or something yeah it does That's yes quite it, a does. Lot. it goes up yeah. and down and he faces <laughs> issues with the government and everything else yeah and tax and stuff like that so let's finish up the last two things boring company i was just with eric garcetti in los angeles oh great yeah Dude, eric's been he's a, a big fan great, yeah eric's been a great supporter yeah he has um, he says anything to cut traffic he doesn't care and he he, he just he, he told me he thought i was like why do you think these people are interested in traffic so much and he said because no matter how rich you are, tra everybody can get caught in traffic. And so they just want to do something about it. Yeah, yeah, Eric's been really supportive of our activity um, in LA. I mean, technically, our first tunnel's in, in technically in, Haw in Hawthorne. But, right. Um, but we do expect to, over time, uh, create a network of tunnels under greater LA. Mm -hmm. um, and I think this is really the key to getting around the city very fast. Mm -hmm. um, you either, you've got to go 3D. Like, essentially, we, we have a 3D like our offices are 3D mm -hmm. um, and, and dense, and then we then have a 2D road transport network. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, and, and everyone just go in and out of the buildings at the same time. Right. So naturally, you're going to have traffic. So you're thinking all it's around, like, lots of roads within the tunnels. Y yeah, m many levels of tunnels. Right. So Like a subway system. Yeah, but even subways tend to be essentially two-dimensional. Like mm -hmm. you'll have a subway cross another subway, but they've never really tried to make many layers of subways. Mm -hmm. The cost of tunneling historically has been uh, prohibitive, mm -hmm. um, and, and they've also been incredibly slow. So if, if it takes like, you know, like I don't know how long, like say the, the New York subway had a one-mile extension or something, mm -hmm. and it cost... Well, San Francisco, they're still building it. Yeah, exactly. I mean... I, I know that they're like uh, LA has a subway, although people don't. Most people it's good. don't. I use don't. It. It does, is it good? Yeah, it's good. Um, you're the first person I've met that actually uses a subway. Use it. Sure. Um, I use all public transportation. Uh, well, they had a two mile extension or two and a half mile extension on the subway, it cost $2 billion. So, mm -hmm. like the typical cost for a subway, uh, you know, per mile cost for a subway in the US has been about a, a, a billion dollars a mile. Mm -hmm. So, that is not a very scalable to solution. Tunnels. Yeah, so you really have to, we have to massively improve the technology associated with digging, with tun digging tunnels. So And the that, tunnels themselves, being 3D tunnels versus 2D tunnels. Being many layers. Right. I mean, you could do, you could certainly have a subway system which had many layers of tunnels, but the tunnels are so prohibitively expensive that they don't do it. Right. But you can go down, you know, 100 levels if you want. You could have 100 layers of, of tunnels on, on top of each other. It's, you can go further down, you can go up. Mm -hmm. So the, the deepest mines are much deeper than the tallest buildings. Right. Uh, but but really the key is a massive improvement in tunneling technology. That's that's the that's the linchpin. Like that's fundamentally what it what it amounts to. And uh, as I got started digging in to tunnels, <laughs> oh, good one. Oh, it's just, uh, <laughs> Please don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> you need to stop. <laughs> is that how you amuse oh, wait, yourself? I, I, it's like yeah yeah no I've got a million of them. Um, in. You know, uh, t tunnels are, are really so underappreciated. They are. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> they have no no place to go but down. Oh, my gosh. All right. Okay. <laughs> These are dad jokes. You know that. I am a dad. So I get that. But yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> so I'm glad you're amused with yourself. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Yeah. I, I, I definitely am um, amused by myself. It's it's a terrible That's habit. That's obvious. Ter um, terrible habit. Um, so, so tunnels. So, yes, tunnels. <laughs> the Elon, you're not even high, and you're laughing at yourself. Come on, let's do. No, tunnels. no, I, it's a terrible habits. I, I I laugh at my own jokes, okay. even with the terrible ones. All right, okay. Um, so what I discovered was that the um, there, there are massive improvements uh, mm -hmm. possible in tunneling technology, mm -hmm. and you know, I, I found like I always look at things from a fundamentals like uh, 
fundamentals of physics standpoint. Mm -hmm. And so if you like sort of apply physics first principles to to, to any given technology endeavor, you can sort of envelope the what, the possibilities. Mm -hmm. um, and, and what I discovered in talking to the engineering heads of the various tunneling companies is that they actually did not know any, I had no idea what the true potential of tunneling was. Because the first question I'd ask is, well, is your tunneling machine uh, power limited or thermally limited? Mm -hmm. so this is like a very obvious question mm -hmm. from a physics standpoint. Nobody knows, none of them could answer that question. Right. Um, I was like, okay, this is not a good sign. So, and, and uh, the answer is like basically everything's uh, power limited within the framework of, of like the how, how much you can transport heat away from the, the face using, um, uh, you know, some sort of mm -hmm. uh, li liquid cooling system. Right. But we're so far away from that, it's we're crazy far away from that. Of being able to do that. No, of of any being anywhere near the thermal limit. Right. Like like things like in increasing power is relatively easy, and then you the, then you hit the threshold where you've, you've added so much power that you're melting the drill head. Exactly. So that then you have to uh, put a lot of effort into cooling the drill head mm -hmm. in order to not melt it, um, or go with like uh, advanced ceramics. Um, but then you still have to cool the bearings um, and, and the bearing housings. So. You know, so I'm, I'm used to a lot of the stuff from like rocket engine design, for example. Right. The, you know, our, our to the turbo pump on the Merlin engine runs at uh, like 36,000 RPM. It's got 10,000 horsepower and weighs. Uh, that in so the, applying the, the rocket technology to what you're doing. With yeah, time. essentially taking rocket technology and automotive technology and applying it to uh, drilling technology. Right. So the uh, problem is it's too hot. It's too hot. No, it, I, 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 that, that would, it's, we need to massively crank up the power right. uh, to the drill head, right? Um, and then, we're, we're, like, th th then we need to cool it. Mm -hmm. But, but we, we, the first step is simply jacking up the power like crazy, and then automating the placement of the tunnel reinforcements. Mm -hmm. So the tunnel, the tunnel. So you don't have to continue to be going slowly and building it. Yeah, r r like right now, uh, tunnel machines uh, will drill for a bit, and then they'll stop, and they'll. People will put in the very slowly put in the, the, the reinforcing, reinforcing segments, and and so like tunneling machines basically go at, at half speed. Right. Um, I think of that a lot about house construction, how slow it is. Why is house right. construction so slow? Well, you can make house construction crazy fast if you're in a factory. Yes, or other ways. I'm just uh, just a totally different topic. But it's yeah, construction a, in general. Yeah. Is, yeah. I, I think there's a lot of potential for I disruption agree. and like. Uh, for entrepreneurs to enter construction in general, mm -hmm. um, there's a tremendous, tremendous amount of opportunity. Anyway, so, so cranking up the, massively cranking up the power of the drill, mm -hmm. then um, making the drill battery powered, which is not something they'd ever considered. Right. Um, uh, but the nice thing, but, but if you don't make it battery powered, then you've got to have this massive cable. Behind it. Uh, right. Yeah, and, and then the, 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 t the cable, in order to have the cable be manageable at all, has to be like, like an 11 kVA, uh, you know, 11,000 volts mm -hmm. uh, um, cable, and even then it's thick, and uh, and then you've got to have step-down transformers for the uh, the, the drill head because the drill head's going to operate at like 480 volts or thereabouts. It's only going to operate at 11,000. Um, so, so then you've got these massive transformers, um, this crazy cable length. Um, the, slow. Yeah, it's it's very slow, and and then uh, <laughs> this is blew my mind. They're using like a diesel locomotive. Like the, the 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 standard practice is to use a diesel locomotive mm -hmm. to transport the tunneling segments to to the drill head and to transport the dirt out, and to use and one way. So it's like an old coal mine. Yeah, it's weird. It's like pretty weird. So yeah. th then, if you've got a diesel locomotive in a tunnel, then you've got to put massive effort into right. into yeah. blowing clean air into the, right. into the tunnel and and getting because you've got the. How else would you get the dirt out? Oh, it, you, well, we just use an electric car. Right. So we took a Model 3 chassis mm -hmm. and converted that into a train, Model 3 powertrain chassis, and, and uh, so now we have a... So you don't need to worry about the rest of this stuff. Right? Yeah, so now it's not, it's no not tracks, spewing... No. It's, not, it's not consuming oxygen and spewing noxious fumes. Right. This was a big improvement. Right. So when are uh, these the, happening? When will one be useful? The, 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 the Hawthorne oh, one? Yeah, we're, the test tunnel. It's yeah, a we're, test tunnel. Yeah, we're about to finish the first uh, test tunnel. At what cost? Um, I don't know. I think it's probably excluding the the the, the equipment for probably cost us like ten million dollars. Right. For, to for put a mile. This in. To put this in. Um, so I'm going to finish it's, up. That's one way. So so when do, when will people be able to use it? Actually use it. Is it we're planning on happening ha having an opening party on December 10th. On December 10th. In six weeks. Six weeks. Yeah. 
And what's okay, through, through there? Sure. Yeah. I'll come. So it's be a very one-dimensional it's a party. For my birthday, that'd be great. Mm -hmm. yeah. So there you go, guys. That was the most key piece of information that Elon Musk delivered during that entire podcast. Ten million dollars per mile, which, in tunneling terms, is next to nothing. Uh, so if you imagine that some uh, transit authorities are paying near nearly a billion for a mile it's one hundredth of the cost insane absolutely insane so and there's a lot of things they can do on top of that to get the cost down obviously all the muck they can recycle into the bricks they can fully automate the machine and they can do it faster because the machine they've got at the moment is basically just a standard machine. So if they can improve the, um, the speed, even by a factor of five, or 500% rather, that would be a huge improvement in overheads, uh, less, less man hours, less time on site. It would be a massive improvement in the overall cost per mile. So it, it's good. It's good to hear him talk about this so positively. Uh, clearly, he he's excited by the Boeing company. He wants the Boeing company to do well. Um, I believe, uh, based on what he said in this podcast, that he's going to put a lot more time into the company over the coming years. Um, as he sort of drops away from uh, Tesla, maybe a new CEO comes in at Tesla. Uh, he'll begin to spend more time. At SpaceX and the Boeing company and uh, maybe another startup you never know with Elon <laughs> um, but uh, another another thing that he mentioned was that he'd actually spoke to other uh, executives from other companies that that bore tunnels so I'd imagine one of them would be the major German uh, manufacturers of tunnel boring machines so the fact that he asked them that question and they couldn't tell him what was limiting the performance of the machines kind of tells you something's not right. They have a monopoly over the market. They control the vast majority of machines that are sold in Europe, the Middle East, uh, Africa, Australia, and, and mainly built in, 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 to a certain extent, the USA as well, uh, and South America. All, the, all those machines generally come from Europe and possibly from China now, although if you if you're working on a major project that machine is going to be built probably in Europe and probably going to be built in Germany so the fact that they've got a monopoly they're not innovating and they don't really understand fully what is limiting the performance of the machines kind of tells you they don't want to improve the performance of the machines not huge incremental performance improvements they're happy with getting another one percent out of the machine every year yeah we've improved it slightly but imagine if you could build a machine that was was uh, digging, you know, 300 foot an hour. Imagine that, 300 foot an hour. That would be insane. It, it potentially it could happen. Um, what else did he mention? Um, he, he basically mentioned that if they increase the power of the Boeing company TBM by a large factor, they still wouldn't necessarily need to uh, cool the machine. They'd have to increase it, you know, 20 fold the power going to the machine to, to even think about cooling it so you imagine the performance improvements that you could get just by increasing the power by you know five or ten times very exciting very very exciting um he's mentioning the uh, muck carts that they use uh, the model 3 uh, motors and chassis uh, to pull them out obviously that's better for people who work in tunnels because uh, you're going to have uh, emissions from those diesel locomotives I'm sure it's controlled but and the, I'm sure they've got really powerful ventilation systems but still uh, th there's going to be particulate matter in the air even with the best ventilation systems um, just trying to think what else he mentioned um, but yeah so he's talking about the actual system they want a huge network of tunnels which is another excellent thing it, they're obviously thinking far far in advance of the hawthorne test tunnel and even the dugout loop they clearly want thousands of miles of tunnels 
if they can get this technology working the way Elon Musk thinks they can, then it's going to make perfect economic sense to be building hundreds of miles of tunnels, potentially every couple of years. And then over the coming decades, they will have thousands of miles of tunnels. Um, and they'll basically have the monopoly over how you get around LA. And, and, and at that point, or probably even before that point, they can even think about expanding to various other cities, Chicago, uh, Baltimore, Washington, um, maybe even uh, San Diego, San Francisco on that kind of, uh, uh, on that coast there. Uh, and then maybe even they'll come to the UK, come to Manchester. <laughs> or I probably wouldn't come to London because obviously like the underground system is kind of dominating London. Uh, but certainly cities like Birmingham, Manchester, Leeds, Liverpool don't really have an underground system here in the UK. And uh, Leeds, Liverpool and Manchester are all very close together. So why not have a Boeing Company uh, loop system in the north of England as part of the, the Northern Powerhouse, which is a, a government initiative to get more companies spending money in the northwest and to improve transport links and improve the overall business environment. So, yeah, great podcast. You should definitely listen to it in full. He mentions... Uh, he mentions in passing the vertical takeoff jet. He mentions the uh, Tesla pickup, which is a product that I definitely want to uh, to purchase when that comes out. Um, yeah, some really interesting things that I mentioned in there. So definitely go out and watch it, guys. It's on uh, Stitcher. I'll put that in the links below. Uh, but overall, guys, thanks for watching. Um, I've got some good episodes coming up soon. Please like and subscribe. I have set up an Instagram account please uh, join that. I'm on Twitter, very active on Twitter, and we have uh, the Facebook, which we're setting up now as more of a discussion point. So again, guys, please join that. Thank you for watching. And remember, guys, don't be boring. Thank you and goodbye. Adios, amigos.